Now, tensions between the ruling All Progressives Congress, the APC, and the opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, seem to be rising as the APC has staged a counter-protest. Now, during the protest, the new Imo state governor, Hope Uzodima, stated that the motive of the PDP members was not about the judgment of the Supreme Court justice, but to cause problem in the country and overthrow the Buhari administration. What is the point of all of these protests? And also, where are the people of Imo in all of this? Joining us to discuss this still in the studio with me is Lulu Elegbe, political analyst, and Raymond Nakanebe, legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for still staying with us this Thank evening. Let, let's look at this. Should the protests, ongoing protests now across the country, should he have been restricted just within Imo State? Oh, I don't think it should be restricted okay. within uh, Imo State because um, it's a national issue and justice is a social value. And a social value should not be tied to a particular state. Because that's happened in Imo State does not mean it does not affect uh, uh, the, the young man in any other part of this country. And as a matter of fact, we have Imo indigenous scattered all over this country. But so, given, given that the protest is actually um, protesting against, um, it's, it's a party interest. It's a party interest. No, the, the protest is, uh, for, if I understand uh, the, the motive, mm. is to actually drive home the, uh, the perceived uh, we have perceived uh, 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 unfair ruling. Yes, yeah, unfair ruling, ruling uh, by the Supreme Court yeah. in the Imo uh, Guba appeal. Now, that is a national issue. You understand? It was delivered by the justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. We have one Supreme Court of Nigeria with jurisdiction all over the country. So I think to send there, to drive their, their message home more, uh, it's uh, staging it in different parts of the country, helps to actually send that message that yes, we actually, uh, we, we strongly feel that uh, justice was actually, was actually um, um, uh, compromised in the, in the way the uh, matter was decided. Okay. All right, now look, based on this protest going on in different states right now, the, yeah. the, the, the newly sworn in governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodima, has alleged that um, the PDP has a plot to overthrow the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari. That it's not just about the Supreme Court's ruling on, on the governorship election in Nemo State. Let, let me mm. have your, your two cents on this. Yeah, that's right. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm sure he knows. I'm, I'm come on. I'm sure, I'm sure he knows that's not that's nonsense because um, he'll say he will say that because he has the platform to say that right now, and everyone's listening to him. Um, so. When you start to say they're not really protesting about emo, they're protest it's, a, it's a disguise to overthrow, the, I mean, overthrow the government, mm. how exactly? I'm not, I've, not, I've seen the protest videos, I've not seen any armed person, I've not seen anyone confronting mm. the police. So when, you, so when you talk about how exactly people carrying placards are going to overthrow the federal government, I'm not quite sure how that's possible. So he went further to say that he's calling on the security agencies to investigate these groups. Yeah. And, so, that, that sort of betrays the motive behind his statement, which is, um, these are my opponents, you should investigate them. And again, it's just nonsense. It's, I mean, it's, it's a political protest. You don't like it, um, you don't like it, or it's uncomfortable to you, doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's the bottom line. Very much one way I, I agree, this. I agree, I agree, <laughs> absolutely. Um, the protest is strictly, um, uh, it has no intent to uh, dethrone the government of President Muhammad Buhari. We've seen, uh, when this government was in opposition, we've seen them stage similar protests. And exactly. we didn't hear the media spokesman of the then government calling it uh, an attempt to uh, overthrow the government. It is, it is them um, perhaps um, 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 exercising their rights guaranteed by the constitution to actually protest when they feel hard uh, done by, by any uh, issue. All right, let's take a look at this report on we back still on Plus Politics. The protest commenced from Legacy House in Maitama to the Supreme Court. The protesters were senior members of the People's Democratic Party, including its vice presidential candidate in the just concluded general elections, Peter Obi, all dressed in black to express their grievances. They say they are unhappy over the recent Supreme Court ruling, which removed the governor of Imo State on the platform of the PDP. Emeka Ihedioha and ordered that Senator Hope Uzodima of the APC be immediately sworn in as governor. The 
the party members used the opportunity to call on the apex court to look into its judgment and reverse its decision. I was the minority party. I won the election. And PDP did, did not interfere. I went to court. PDP did, did not interfere. I will have been from me. I don't so show on it. We now have been talking. We now have been talking from judiciary. The PDP did what NDC did today. What we are seeking for is for you to review this error because the figures are not adding up. Yes, sir. We therefore call on the leadership of the judiciary at that highest level. So please, we are all human beings. By the grace of God, God is the highest. We know that you worship God. All of us worship God. Under the sun, under one God. Review, revisit, and reverse the immoral state. Judgment. Meanwhile, another protest by the All Progressive Congress took place simultaneously. <laughs> Testers condemned the demand by the PDP, calling it self serving and a mockery of democracy. By the grace of God, who the demand will do is eight years in Imo. And I asked, I said something the other time. I said, Zafar said the whole NPC structure was collected from them. From status for the assembly, down to Cantelor, down to chairman, right, senate, governor. The judgment was okay by PDP. In River, the same thing. But here in Imo, which our mandate was studied, they are here doing one useless kangaroo uh, protest. They, this is their end. Idong Joseph, Plus TV Africa. Now, the, the PDP national chairman, um, Uche Sekondos, has asked the Supreme Court to reverse his judgment on this, on the Imo governorship election. W what is your take? And now, do we have any antecedent where that there's a possibility of this as, as a legal practitioner? Uh, uh, well, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, I think Justice will put our blessed memory, put that beyond contention. He said that we are final, uh, not because we are, uh, we are infallible, not because we are, we, are, we are final, not because we are infallible, but we are infallible because we are final. You understand? Um, there are circumstances, however, whereby the court can actually um, um, retrace itself and actually correct any, uh, if any judgment was delivered out of, um, uh, out of um, maybe carelessness, which we call pancuria in law. But those circumstances does not, um, uh, does not reflect the situation Today, there has to be, if the judgment was, if there are any clerical errors in the judgment, the Supreme Court can um, amend those clerical errors, you understand? If the judgment was delivered without... Um, but we know our rule, it's, it's ruling... No, just when, correction, rule, correcting the, clerical errors in the okay. judgment, yes. right? Second one is when um, the judgment was delivered without service on a proper party. For example, I take you to court and then you did not serve me, I did not serve you with the processes. And the Supreme Court give judgment on my behalf. I can go back and say, I was not saved, and then they reverse their safe on that. And then finally, if the judgment was procured by fraud, right? Now you have to make a strong case of your conviction that the judgment was actually procured by fraud, and not what, not what, you, what you just perceive to be mm. fraud. You understand? Yeah. In every other circumstances, it has to be until such a case comes back before the Supreme Court again. And then you, the party who want them to depart from that decision, will now tell them that, my lords, what you decided in case A in 2016 was actually wrong. You should have a use opportunity to revisit your decision in that case so you can now correct it. You understand? That is on the substance of the case. Okay. It can only happen in when the issue comes up before it subsequently not over a matter it has already decided okay. to the finality. Now, look, this election was actually challenged on the grounds that INEC refused to accept results of 388 polling units. Um, it accepted at the point of collation. Now, would you say that the judgment by the Supreme Court was, was served after due diligence and considering every possibility, every admissible evidence mm. to have ruled in favor of um, um, hope, Uzo Dima? So the, the whole thing is a bit, um, the whole thing is a bit tricky. Yeah because the, based on the initial results released by INEC, Hope Uzodima actually came fourth. He wasn't even second or third, he came fourth. Which is part of, still part of the controversy yeah. surrounding this ruling. But at the same time, this is why I said it's tricky, because the Supreme Court decision is based on the fact that 
so, um, a number of Uzodima's votes were excluded. Votes from 388 polling units were excluded, yeah. Yeah. illegally excluded. Now, if that's there, if that's the basis, they're correct because once um, the INEC presiding officers in the polling units certify the results, the coalition officer has no legal authority to exclude or reject them. Sure, sure. He has no legal authority. So sure. they're saying these results were certified. They got to the coalition centers and you rejected them for whatever reason, which you're not allowed to do. So on that basis, we're going to accept those results and we're going to add them to Hope Uzodima's numbers. By the time we, we do that, his numbers then go above um, what's his name? Ehedio, who was, like who, who, yeah, who, who was um, initially declared the winner. Now, that sounds straightforward enough. Now, the controversy starts to come in when people start to talk about how um, Hope Uzodima got to those numbers in those polling units in the first place. Yes. Now, this is where I find it a bit strange that um, Ehedio has lawyers did not challenge. If you had issues with those numbers, then I think they should have challenged those numbers in the first place. There yeah, should have been sure. some sort of counter petition sure, sure. to challenge those numbers. But as far as I'm aware, they never did that. Yes. So if they had done that, I have, I mean, and if the numbers are, are as inflated as a lot of people seem to think that they are, mm -hmm. then it's very possible that um, the issue of exclusion of those 388 um, polling mm -hmm. units would have been a moot point because those numbers would have been found to be fictitious anyway. Yeah. And Ihedioha would still be governor. But again, because those were never challenged, I don't think we'll ever know the answer to that question. All right. Now, um, <coughs> as, as parting shorts, I'm going to take if each of your um, personal opinion. 2023 is just around the corner, whether we accept it or not. And there seem to be a whole lot still faulty with the electoral system. They, they, they've called for the Electoral Act to be, to be amended. Yeah. Can we still trust, at this point, as a people and as a nation, should we still trust the process of the ballot to give us qualitative representation, which... It's basically which is the cross of our problem as a people. Good governance, good leadership. Can we see trust the ballot process for quality representation? Lulu, we we'll go with you. We don't have a choice. Um, as flawed as it is, yeah. it's really the only option. Um, the alternative is chaos, which nobody wants. Well, it's not like it's not chaotic now anyway, but it's it's a lesser form of chaos, if I can, if I can call it that. Because at the end of the day, it's not... Democracy, and I mean, they, I don't, I don't know of any of democracy in any country yeah. that is clean, without controversy, without any issues. No matter how little those issues are, yes, we have our own major issues, but I want to believe that we're working towards getting it right. Okay. It's taken us, God knows how. Right, Raymond, in just in that. just thirty seconds, if you okay. will. Okay. Well, um, uh, my my reaction to this judgment was that that the the the, the Supreme Court judgments in Uzodima and Ihedio had is a clear indictment of our electoral process Absolutely. as of today. Absolutely. And it's a reminder that we have a lot of work to do. Okay. I give you a scenario. As mean the result from the now infamous 388 polling unit, we are transmitted from the unit on that election day to Abuja. We wouldn't have be having this, this conversation now. All right. Thank you very much, Absolutely. Raymond Nakenebe, a legal practitioner, and also Lulu Elegbe, a political analyst, for your contributions to PLOS Politics this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now, and when we return, I will give you my take. Do stay with us. Akwa Ibom State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, joined its counterparts across the country to protest what is called unjust and unfair ruling of the Supreme Court on the governorship of Imo State. The protesters marched through the major street in Uyo, the state capital, all clad in black attire. The national legal advisor of the party, Emmanuel Enoidem, said the judgment of the Supreme Court is not known to law and lacks legal precedence. You know that the country is mourning. It shows that the fire bomb is mourning. Yes. And we are mourning for good cause. We are mourning for good reasons. Yes. In 2015, we voluntarily, as a political party, after 16 years, in the nurture of democracy in Nigeria, handed over power to the APC. Since that day, Nigeria has gone into a descent of anarchy. We are moved into, gradually into fascism. We are moved into totalitarianism. An autocratic government under the leadership of Buhari. I don't call of you for this peaceful disposition. I have listened to various submissions made by various strata of the people 
who are part of this delegation. And as a party here, I want to start by sympathizing with the Imo State Chapter of our great party for this great rape of democracy. I want to say, as a sister state, we share in their pain, we share in their grief, we share in their agony, and we are mourning along with them. Let me also ask God to encourage the raped governor, immediate past governor of Imo State, His Excellency, Right Honorable Emeka Yedua. I know the God of mercies, I know the God of compassion who will give him the courage to bear this great rape. And may God strengthen him in Jesus' name. Amen. Democracy in Nigeria must be sustained. Amen. Democracy of Nigeria must be revived. Amen. Democracy of Nigeria must be strengthened. Amen. And institutions that support democratic principles must not be tampered with. Amen. That is what we are sharing as a very peaceful state, as a state that is part of very critical element of this country today, in a very strategic and in a very appearance that heaven must open and hear us. Amen. And this is my take. The death of Reverend Lawan and Dimi is a big stain on our conscience as a nation. We're losing Nigerians every day and this shows we're yet to actually win the war on terror. The government would rise to its duty and protect lives so that Nigerians can worship freely without fear of being killed by terrorists. Reverend Lawan was a father, husband and community leader. He died in Mataya and he will definitely be missed. And we want to say may his soul rest in peace. And as for Hope, Uzzadima claimed that the PDP-led protest kicking against the judgment of the Supreme Court that made him the governor of Imo State is an attempt to overthrow the government of Muhammad Dubuari. It comes off a bit ridiculous. Now, it doesn't hold water. And if this comment is a sign of what we should expect from him as a governor of Imo State, then the coming days ahead of the Imo people may not be so palatable for the Imo people. It's been Plus Politics, and thanks for the show tonight, and thank you for staying with us. We'll be back same time tomorrow. Do have a nice evening.